Uh, as I mentioned before, there, there are five tips uh, in order to diagnose and properly measure any intraocular tumor, retinal or choroidal. First of all, you have to properly localize your tumor at the center of the scan. And then you have uh, to identify the center of the uh, globe axis in order to pass uh, the focal uh, unidirectional A scan through this uh, center of uh, uh, the globe. Uh, then you have to lower your gain to get better resolution, identify the surface spike of the surface of tumor, the base uh, tumor identifying the scleral high reflectivity, and then you can measure properly the height diameter and of course to know the tissue differentiation of each tumor by the internal reflectivity. Choroidal melanoma as well known, uh, the classic shape is dome shaped with a smooth surface and uh, the internal reflectivity as we all know is homogeneous, regular, low to moderate internal reflectivity. But not all the choroidal melanomas come with the same appearance. Some of them have choroidal excavation, which means in the backward indentation of the choroid into the sclera. Uh, some of them become lobulated when you get the longitudinal scan, giving a different picture from the transverse scan. Some of them come with collar stud appearance through rupture of the Bruch's membrane, as you can see. Some of them are so large, pedunculated with angle kappa, as you can see, and this is always seen when the tumor is so large and in the superior retina, pedunculating by the gravity. Choroidal melanoma is characterized when it is huge by the presence of spontaneous vascularity. And this spontaneous uh, uh, internal vascularization can be uh, diagnosed by the B-scan flickering uh, when the probe is constant and the globe is constant. And you can see the identification of the flickering movement of uh, the flickering movement on the B scan and better seen when there is a flickering movement also on the A scan. This identifies the internal vascularization of the huge melanoma. Choroidal hemangioma uh, appears as diffuse choroidal thickening, of course, with some of them with focal smooth uh, elevation. This smooth elevation, we can identify the surface tumor spike, the base tumor spike, and the internal reflectivity always shows regular high internal reflectivity, as you can see. Choroidal metastatic lesions come with uh, irregular surface and comes with different pictures, most of them irregular. Of course, with the surface spike, base spike, and the internal reflectivity is irregular with high to moderate internal reflectivity, but it is heterogeneous, not homogeneous. RPE adenoma is one of the uh, tumors that I didn't encounter, I didn't face before, and I was uh, very pleased to see many of the cases with Professor Dr. Hani Hamza. They are uh, some sort of benign tumors that appear in the retina. And so we can identify them clinically by the deeply pigmented lesions with vitreous uh, clumps of uh, vitreous uh, pigments and some re uh, sub-retinal exudation. As you can see, this uh, tumor, the surface spike appears like this, and this high spike is not the spike of the sclera. The sclera appears behind, but this spike is the spike of the uh, uh, Bruch's line. So the tumor tissue appears in front of the Bruch's line, as you can see. And of course, uh, here is the vitreous clumps of pigments and the exudative detachment with the subretinal exudation in some scan. Another one of choroidal of RPE adenoma showing a high spike of uh, uh, Brooks line with uh, the internal reflectivity more or less homogeneous, giving the shape of V pattern in some tumors. This is the retinal capillary hemangioma in a lady with von heppel lindau and we can see that the von heppel lindau comes with the retinal capillary hemangioma with the feeding artery and the draining vein. Uh, this feeding artery accidentally, uh, when doing uh, intraoperative ultrasonography, we discovered that there is the feeding artery gives the pulsatile appearance, as you can see in this video. And this is very interesting as in the follow-up uh, by the regression of the tumor, this pulsatile uh, movement uh, disappears. As you can see, it's very evident pulsatile arterial pulsations that disappears on uh, regular follow-up by regression of the uh, hemangioma. Retinoblastoma comes with different 
shapes, either uh, endophytic, exophytic, uh, diffuse, uh, homogeneous tissue inside the eye with the, the regular uh, clumps of uh, uh, calcification with the back shadowing. And this back shadowing sometimes hinder uh, the proper assessment or proper evaluation measurement of the mass in some uh, patients. The ultrasound is not only for uh, pre-operative assessment and measurement, but also for intraoperative uh, uh, use. We can use the uh, ultrasonography or B-scan as an intraoperative navigator. As uh, when uh, putting the, pl the plaque onto the sclera over the tumor and applying the B-scan, you can see that uh, the uh, plaque may be misdirected uh, or dislocated outside the tumor, not covering the whole tumor as you can see with the arrows. Uh, then the tumor, when re-localizing uh, the plug over the tumor, here is uh, the role of the ultrasound to proper localization of the plug onto the tumor for whole coverage of the tumor and proper uh, treatment. As a post-operative follow-up role, uh, of course, we use the ultrasound to show the regression in the height of the tumor. Uh, not only the height of the tumor, but here, as you can see, that this uh, melanoma measures uh, 6 millimeter preoperatively with the low to moderate reflectivity, internal reflectivity uh, preoperatively. Postoperatively, the patient shows uh, uh, good regression with 5 millimeter uh, height and also the uh, internal reflectivity increases, as you can see, and this is a good sign for proper treatment. Some of the mimicking lesions appear uh, in some cases, uh, like this lady comes with irregular uh, tumor, and this uh, mass or lesion, we thought that it is uh, a, a metastatic lesion of the choroid because the internal reflectivity is heterogeneous, uh, and so a biopsy was uh, taken from her, and she was proved to have inflammatory choroidal lesion and not metastatic lesion. Another uh, uh, lady comes with uh, diffuse uh, vitreous hemorrhage, subretinal hemorrhage, subhyaloid hemorrhage, and a mass, as you can see, or tissue, as you can see, with irregular uh, high internal reflectivity. And this uh, mass, uh, during the follow-up, it decreases. Uh, and the lady was on anticoagulant. And this, uh, you can see the vitreous hemorrhage, the subhyaloid, and the subretinal spike, subretinal hemorrhage. And this lady was suspected to have hemorrhagic CMVM and not tumor. Take home message, common tumor can appear with different faces. Quantitative and kinetic echography are important in putting the puzzles together. We can uh, speak one echographic language when doing the same strategy, the same screening with reliable, understandable, and comparable optimal results.